Welcome to the Social University Podcast. We are so glad you're joining us today because we want to help business owners, entrepreneurs, and people just like you who want to build their business online. Listen, if we can do it, you can do it. So let's go. Small business owners, do you ever wonder how much money you should be spending on your marketing budget? Annually, monthly, how much should you be investing? Is it enough? Is it too much? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. And um, let's just go ahead and jump in. I'm Karen Taradis with Social U. And every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central, we come to you live to talk about social media marketing tips, tricks, and trends. And today, it's all about how much should your business budget for digital marketing. Okay, so why do you need a marketing budget? Why can't you just keep doing what you've been doing? Why is it important? Well, marketing is, it's complicated. Um, there's, you know, we are on the possibility of recession and recessions are always a possibility. Budget cuts are a possibility for the businesses that you're actually servicing right now. And a lot of that stuff can be combated with an effective marketing plan. And for this to have an effective marketing plan, you need a strategy and that requires a budget. And a budget will help you prioritize your projects plan for future projects, assign funds for training or for equipment or for technical assistance like apps or um, programs that your employees or that you might need. It can help you show a positive return on investment and it helps you know how much you can afford for current and future employees. So that's really why you need (laughs) a strategy and a budget. So how much do you need? Okay, the simple answer is that uh, for marketing, almost 8 to 14% of the average company's total budget. That's it. Somewhere between 8 and 14%. And this number varies greatly. A lot of small businesses will only spend 5% and larger businesses can go up to 20%. It just depends on the business, on the budget, on how much you have available. It, it, It depends. So let's take a look at what others are doing so we can kind of help gauge what you might want to do. So traditional marketing, it's really shifting. And Um, Think about it. When was the last time you actually read a piece of mail you got? And today, when you go to your mailbox, look and see what's in it. Is there a shiny postcard? Is there a, a brochure? Is there a magazine? And do you take the time to look at it before you toss it in the trash? Or, I mean, does it even make it that far? Do you just toss it in the trash on your way inside? That is a traditional form of marketing. And while that used to be super, super effective, it's not as effective anymore. Now, there are exceptions and there are industries that do really well with direct mail, but it's it's a tough fit and you have to really know your audience to be able to make that work. Um, more marketers now than ever are spending more money on social media and ads on those platforms, especially Facebook. It's having the most growth. 25% of marketers will be investing in Facebook for the very first time ever in 2023. Video, uh, 91%, 91%, just almost every single marketer will maintain or increase their YouTube investment. 56% will increase their TikTok investment. And this is, we're talking about for 2023. And 34% will maintain. So YouTube is going to maintain and grow 91%. TikTok is going to maintain and grow 56%. And 89% of marketers plan to increase or maintain their influencer marketing. So and you don't have to have a million followers to be an influencer. You can have 10,000 followers to be an influencer. Totally up to you. If you have the right audience and the right people looking at you, you can get a lot done with 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers. Again, it doesn't have to be a million to be effective. Um, Small businesses are also spending in a survey of 85 small businesses and business owners and marketers, 52% say they're spending between five and 15,000 per month on marketing, which is quite a chunk of change for a small business. Now, all of these stats and statistics came from one of my favorite publications of all time, HubSpot, love HubSpot. They have some of the best research. So if you're interested in this, I will include the links. You can go back and check those stats. So now that you know a little bit more about what others are doing and what your average monthly budget or your average annual budget, um, how do you get the most out of that? Well, the first and most important thing is you have to understand your client and you have to understand their spending journey. Most people do not go to a website, fall in love with you and spend money immediately. It's a process. 
They see a video. They think about what they need for their business. They send you an email and ask you some questions. You schedule a discovery call, ask some more questions. You send them a proposal. They review it. They ask some more questions. You have to understand your sales process and your client's journey before you can really effectively market to them. You also have to know, and I would say understanding your client includes knowing where are they? What platforms do they spend time on? What do they want to see and what drives the purchase? So if you are selling, let's use skateboards as an example. What drives the purchase? Probably seeing other skateboarders use your skateboards. So influencer marketing would be a huge part of your marketing plan. It would be critical to your marketing plan. And where are skateboarders? Well, I don't know a whole lot of 63-year-old skateboarders. They're mostly younger girls and boys. Um, so you need to be on a younger platform, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Those are your platforms if that's your target market. And conversely, if you're talking about social security benefits or AARP, Facebook is probably going to be your market, although YouTube is growing tremendously for that target market. So again, you have to know who you're targeting so you can understand which platform they're on and how they get to that platform and then how they get to you. You also need to have a good understanding of what drives them to purchase. If you need help hire an agency, that's what we're for. My company can come in and do an assessment. They can do an evaluation. They can help create a strategy for you. You have to know your, your marketing. And I cannot tell you how many businesses where um, they just, they truly don't know. Even the website is confusing. You go open up the website and you still don't know what they do. It, it doesn't help your end user. As a matter of fact, um, Donald Miller's um, story brand, if you confuse, you lose. If your ideal customer doesn't understand what you do in the first few seconds, they're gone and they're not coming back. So if you need help to create that messaging or if you need help to get there, hire an agency. You can also hire in-house where you can hire someone inside your company to help you or you can contract support for the person that's in-house. We do that all the time. Do we work with other marketers? Absolutely. It's a big portion of our business. And it's not because the marketers don't know what they're doing. It's because it is so much. It can be so overwhelming. It's difficult for one person or for even one department to maintain, especially if you're on multiple channels. So if you need the help, get the help you need. You also want to invest in your content. And when I say invest in your content, I mean financially and time wise, you have to take the time and sometimes the money required to get those images and get that video. If you don't have great video and you don't have great images, you're not going to get a great response. That's the way it is. Now, sometimes, sometimes, uh, and I hate to, I mean, Blair Witch Project, but sometimes grainy, bumpy video works great. Again, it depends on your audience and your messaging, but you do have to take the time to get the images in the video. Um, and stop wasting time on what isn't working. Twitter, do you need to be on Twitter? Probably not. It's kind of a dumpster fire right now. Do you, is it required for your marketing? Unless you're political or sports related. And when I say sports related, I mean geared towards men who use sports equipment who are older or geared towards younger sports um, participants probably don't need to be on Twitter. If you're a women's clothing line, Twitter is not where you need to be. It's just not where your audience is. And then of course, analyze and execute constantly, constantly, at least quarterly. You need to be taking a look at your analytics and your statistics to figure out what is working. Oh, humor worked. Memes worked. Well, if your boss pushes back on memes and you can show him on um, the last quarter, that's where all of our click throughs came from to the website. Chances are he won't push back on that anymore. So do you need a marketing budget? You absolutely do. Do you need a clear marketing message? Absolutely you do. Will it help your company? Tremendously. I'm not saying it can recession-proof your company, but man, it sure can help. It's just like having car insurance. If you have a wreck, may not pay for everything, but man, it sure beats you having to pay for everything by yourself. It's great to have a plan in place that can really help your company grow. 
Okay, next week when we go live, we're going to talk about ways to engage your community beyond just responding to the comments. How do you get engagement? How do you grow your engagement? And then the 23rd of August, we have a special guest, Ben DeLoach. He is an SEO expert, and he's going to talk to the small business owner about uh, simple, even free things that you can do to improve your SEO immediately. Now, of course, SEO is like moving the Titanic. It takes a minute for it to be effective, but there are things you can do right now that will help you 90 days from now, so you can execute immediately, and it will start helping you immediately, but you probably won't see it for about three months. Um, That's what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks, and then we have a bonus Q&A the last week of the month. That is it for me today. If you guys have questions or comments, please leave those. We always monitor and are happy to help and respond. Until next week, I'm Karen Taradis and I'm here to help. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for the Social University Podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media at Stay Social U. That's the letter U. And we will talk to you next week. Remember, you've got this.